Hello, welcome to my channel. I'm John, N0JPI. Um, today I wanted to look at um, the Red Pattaya board, but also to have a look at it, it's got other options and accessories you can add to it. And one of them is a Vector Network Analyzer. So it comes in a small box. So this is the box the Vector Network Analyzer comes in. It's a, um, it's a way of um, measuring signals that are reflected from um, a component under, under test. So um, in my case, I'm going to look at my end fed antenna, but you can also do it on a filter as well. Um, it's a bit different to a normal um, antenna analyzer, because an antenna al analyzer measures the impedance and the reflected um, radio signal to give you a SWR reading. The vector network analyzer can also tell you um, things about the reactants. So rather than just look at the impedance value on its own, it can give you more details about um, what's causing that SWR, whether it's inductance or capacitance or straight on resistance. Um, the Red Pattaya board can operate at circuits up to 50 megahertz. Um, and that's fine for HF applications. Um, and it can measure various different um, parameters, which we'll have a look at next. This is my setup for the Red Pattaya's Vector Network Analyzer. It just comes in this cardboard box. So I've got my Red Pattaya already set up. I've disconnected all the inputs and outputs um, because I'm going to set up them with the Vector Network Analyzer. I've already powered on the Red Pattaya. I probably should do it. It's disconnected. Just take the power off. There's two USB ports on the bottom. There's power and console. You can connect to your via Ethernet or you can have a Wi-Fi dongle. Or you can have both. So in the box, we've got two SMA patch leads. And then we've got the package. And then we've got open, short, load, and these are calibration um, terminators. The box itself doesn't use the connectors, so it doesn't use these expansions connectors. It just sits on top of the Repertire itself. If you have the Repertire case, which you don't have to have, but I have ordered, the um, it could just sit on the top of the case quite nicely. Um, so we've got three ports. We've got out, in, and a device under test. The out connector of the VNA module just connects to the input one. It has to be on the low voltage jumper settings. Um, I find this is easier with this upside down. So apparently when you're connecting these, you want to make sure the barrel rotates, but the connectors on either side don't. So do that. And then the in connects to the out. The inputs of the web tire are high impedance, but they're 50 ohm outputs. So that then sits nicely on that. On the top. The dust off. Um, if you had the case, it would sit on a bit better. Um, then your device under test connects. Now my, my device under test is going to be my NFED antenna, my home um, radio antenna. So that's going to connect under the device under test connection. That's it, that will be my setup. Now, um, before you actually do the device under test, you have to use the calibration terminators. So here we've got a set, and these come with a vector network analyzer kit, accessory. Um, so we have a load, which 50 ohm load. We've got a short, connector 
I've got an open connector that doesn't have a center pin. So this is for calibration to get rid of any effects of the actual cables themselves. So first of all, you would do the open and the short and the low connectors. And I will show you the calibration in the application. That's the bench set up. Once you've got your Rapitire set up and connected and running and powered on, the next thing to do is to go to the Rapitire's web page. You can find this by looking at the sticker on the Ethernet port and that tells you what it is. Um, so for this application we want the Vector Network Analyzer. When you click on it, it loads the application into the FPGA but the front end for it is its own program so you'll have to click on this link and download it and install it. Um, so if you download it and then you get this program running on your desktop. Once you've loaded the Vector Network Analyzer program, you need to type in the IP address of your web tire or you can use the um, host name similar to the website and then press connect. If it's not um, plugged in or the network's not right, it will come up with a message saying that it refused connection, but I've got it right. So that's good. Also, you need to have the Vector Network Analyzer running on the web Red Pattaya website, as I just showed. Otherwise, it will get and come up with a message, um, although this time it would say uh, connection was refused. You can, if you want to, you can actually um, save and you can load back up the configuration. So um, if you have done the calibration or if you've uh, done a test on the device on the test you can just read the configuration and then you can show all the parameters of the uh, the object under test and your calibration as well so for this test uh, i'm going to stick with the default which is 10 kilohertz up to 60 megahertz which is about the limit of the repetire and I have connected the open um, test load. So if you press open, you'll then do the open calibration. And then you uh, disconnect the open test load and put in the short test load. Um, they have got O, S and L at, on the front of them. Um, the open load also has, hasn't got a center pin either. So that's a good way of telling that one. Once you've connected them, you just press short that will give us a short test and then we can connect the one that says L which is a 50 ohm load. This calibration step is just so that you can reduce any errors caused by cables and things like that. I think ideally you would connect them to the end of your cable but at the end of my cable I've got my antenna so I haven't got that option. So I just do the load and that's it calibrated so we've got open data short data and then load data right so now we're on the device under test data so on the vector network analyzer as i showed before there's our in and out connectors um the in goes to the out of the repertoire and the out on the vector network analyzer accessory goes to the in or in one of the red pattern. So then you connect the device under test to the DUT port and you can press single or you can press auto. In my case, I'm going to go with auto and I'll do a full sweep of all the frequencies. Auto actually does it, it keeps doing it. Right, so we have done the device on the test. So we get a Smith chart, which is useful if you want to look at uh, transmission lines, although mine is an antenna, so it's a bit different. We've got the impedance, which is a bit more um, something we're used to. 
because it's a vector network analyzer, it'll do the impedance in ohms, as, as this is a radio antenna, we're aiming for 50 ohms, but it's an NFED, so it's uh, not 50 in that many places. But it also shows the degrees of the impedance as well. I'll show, it'll show you whether it's reactance and it'll show you whether it's capacitive reactance or inductive reactance. Uh, we can also look at the standing wave ratio, um, the SWR. So ideally we want this down to be one to one. There's only a couple of places where it's one to one and there's one place here where it's quite good as well. Um, I'm hoping later on to be able to use this vector network analyzer to be able to trim my antenna. So I should be able to trim it to get some of these um, lower impedance areas near the amateur radio bands. Um, you can rescale it as well, by the way. So if you uh, edit the axis, we can maybe change it from um, three up to five. And there you go, you can see even more of the curve there. You can also get um, a reflection coefficient, which is a bit like SWR, so you can see the pattern's pretty similar. Um, but instead of um, going from one to one to infinity, it uh, goes from zero to one, um, where zero is ideal and one is awful. I high mismatch. Uh, it's uh, basically all getting reflected up here. And you can also see the degrees in here as well, so you can see whether it's inductive or reactive impedance, or if it was zero, and you could see it was straight on resistance. Um, and we can see return loss as well. A low return loss is ideal, so here you can actually use cursors as well, so you can move our cursors to the couple of low return loss areas. Um, you can see they match up with our low SWR and they also match up with our low return coefficient, so they all match together. Um, you can have a look at the gain characteristics and again it shows you the impedance, whether it's inductive or capacitive. Um, Reactance. Um, or if it was in the middle, it would be resistance. Um, and you can look at the open and short gain. So I think for me, probably the most useful bit is either SWR as a typical amateur radio operator or this uh, reflected coefficient, which gives you the reactance information as well. Um, so yeah, you can uh, write the configuration, so you can save the configuration and then you can read the configuration back up again. If you read the configuration, it allows you to do um, tests um, without having to do the calibration each time. Um, I think also, as I did before, yeah, it actually shows it to you, kind of it keeps doing it. So if your device under test changed, um, you, can, you can get, uh, updates on it. It just sweeps from your yeah, start to your yeah, end frequencies. Uh, in fact, I think that's the end of my uh, description of the vector network analyzer so far. As I say, I would like to be able to use this information to be able to um, adjust my NFED and make it better, and I think I might be able to do a video on that. And you could also use this on um, filters, and I might be able to do a video on setting up that as well and see how this works with filters, because you can use it for antennas and filters as well. Um, and you could see how well your band passed filter work was working and things like that. Um, also, I did find out that if you put the uh, logic analyzer on top of the uh, bed attire, it does fit in better um, than I had before when it was falling over. So I'll leave you with a picture of uh, the bed tile on the bottom and the logic analyzer board on the middle.